why did I become a mathematician? When I went up to my, my school, like you, uh, you come here, I had, didn't want to be a mathematician at all, actually. I, I really didn't enjoy maths at primary school. I was rubbish <laughs> at mul multiplication tables and things like that. So when I went up to secondary school, I thought, okay, my dream is to join the Foreign Office, become a spy. Um, so I thought Foreign Office, okay, that's all about languages. Um, so actually, when I went up to my school, um, I tried to sign up for every single language that my school did. But actually, as I began to try and learn these languages, I got, I got more and more kind of uh, frustrated and disillusioned because um, there were so many kind of like strange spellings of words that you just had to remember, um, ir irregular verbs which just didn't seem to make any sense at all. So I got more and more disappointed with this uh, kind of ide idea that I was uh, not going to be able to join the Foreign Office. I, I kind of was already looking for a subject which had some kind of a... Uh, um, a kind of logic to it where everything made sense. Math is something much more exciting, much more creative, much more imaginative. It's an amazing language for kind of trying to understand sort of natural scientific world around you, working out where we've come from, where we're going to go next. It was a, a language which didn't have any irregular verbs as well. Everything made perfect sense. If I'm going to describe what mathematics is, um, I would say it's really um, the subject of looking for patterns trying to find a kind of logic and order in the kind of chaotic, messy world around us and try and find some, some meaning to what's going on around you. Um, I, I've got a few uh, challenges for you to sort of um, uh, see how good pattern searches you are. C can anyone tell me what the next number is in the sequence? 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28. 36. What's the next number in this sequence? 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. 34. So you, you, you know what the name of these numbers are? Fibonacci numbers, they're a very famous sequence. Okay, what about the last sequence? 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. 23, I heard. So what, what are these numbers? They're prime numbers, exactly. For me, are the most important subject numbers in the whole of my subject. Euclid, in one of the great sort of theorems, of first theorems of mathematics, proved that primes, there are infinitely many primes. So I'm going to try and explain this proof, and I'm going to use my football team to try and explain it. Our first season in this league... Um, we, we came rock bottom under the Hackney Martians, which is really uh, humiliating. But I thought, okay, look, we've got to do something about this. And actually, it was about the same time um, that David Beckham moved to Real Madrid. And um, everyone was talking about this shirt that he chose because he had the number 23 shirt. I thought, okay, maybe he chose it because it's a prime number and perhaps primes help you in football, I don't know. Um, and then I started to look and Real Madrid, actually, all the key players at the time, they were all playing in prime number shirts. Maybe there's some secrets, so maybe we can use prime numbers. So actually, the next season, I got our, our Recreativo Hackney to change our kit and we all play in prime numbers now. And it transformed our season. We got promoted into the Super Sunday League Division 1. These numbers are our most basic numbers in the whole of mathematics, yet we still um, don't really understand them at all. And I think that's what, it's, what makes mathematics exciting. It's a living subject, not because of the things you learn at school um, that we know already, but all, actually it's, it's all about the things that we don't know. Where would you say um, research mathematics is going at the moment and how does it apply to things like art and music now? I think we're in an exciting age, actually, where well, there's much more interaction between subjects. I spend quite a lot of time talking to composers who are kind of intrigued to find out mathematical structures that they might use in their composition. Does the fourth dimension really exist? And if infinity doesn't exist, then does minus one exist? Or is it all just... Oh, minus? gosh, what an onslaught. Um, uh, <laughs> so I would say, uh, um, you know, these things can exist as ideas um, and can be represented mathematically. And then the question often is, well, but does, is there a physical representation? These are, these are sort of big sort of philosophical leaps um, in mathematics um, to, to think of uh, sort of things which don't have a physical, obvious physical manifestation. I went to a state comprehensive school, um, so for me, uh, this audience is very close to my heart. Um, uh, and I want to try and give uh, s s the schools like I went to the opportunity to see some of the best speakers that are uh, around in this country. I thought today's again was uh, fantastic, as a mathematician myself, to see one of the England, if not the United Kingdom, if not the world's greatest mathematicians, to speak to the children and inspire them in such a way uh, was truly fantastic. I really liked the, his discussion of the primes, you know, that you could tell that that was something he was really passionate about. Uh, I found today's event interesting and engaging and you could really see how passionate he was about mathematics. I think it was a very uh, good way to look at maths. Uh, it was very provocative for me. It, it provoked thought, so I think it was a very interesting uh, talk. I think it's a great way to uh, inspire people to take up new things, 
they see someone who's been successful in their life, someone to look up to, someone who can provide new information that's beyond just the curriculum. Yeah, I think that young people will be more inspired to really follow up with what they want to do and their interests and it's good to see somebody you know who sort of made it come back and you know inspire us all. We depend on this next generation to solve all the problems that uh, we're, we're having trouble with, things like trying to understand prime numbers. We know that A-levels and A-level grades help students get into university, but an event like this shows them what they can go on and do once they've left university. Uh, someone like Marcus really inspires students to think about what they're going to do uh, with their life.